Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about some of the more accurate dinosaur designs that Jurassic World Dominion is going to be presenting. A lot of you will more than likely know that this was something that the filmmakers have been talking up a lot over the last few years, but as far as story and plot progression goes, it's actually been something that Colin Trevorrow mentioned back when this trilogy was first started in 2015. So back when Jurassic World first came out, writer and director Colin Trevorrow told us that InGen wouldn't always be the only ones able to make a dinosaur, which opened the door to the return of the company that tried to steal embryos in the first Jurassic Park. Biosyn has now gotten into the dinosaur cloning business, and it's something that Colin referred to as PC versus Mac when it comes to who can make the superior product. Other companies such as Manticore have already proven to be getting into the cloning business with the creation of a Smilodon and hybrid animals, but Biosyn seems to have other ideas. Not too long ago, the team behind Jurassic World Dominion shared this image of a Parasaurolophus, which got a lot of people talking due to the fact that it looked so different from what we'd seen before in the franchise's past. Now, when it comes to this particular specimen, I actually asked around to some friends who work in paleontology specifically about what exactly got changed and a friend of the channel James Ronan who has actually been in videos before in the past mentioned the following for starters this new dinosaur has a skull that is less shrink wrapped when compared to what we've seen in the other movies this means that the skin doesn't wrap around the skull so tightly like it did before there's more defined muscle about the jugal and cheekbone the keratin sheath on the beak something that birds and hadrosaurs tend to share is also more defined the dinosaur has a thicker neck and probably the biggest change happens to be its head crest, which is covered in skin. With the animal being more muscular and larger once you put it up against the likes of Engine's Parasaurolophus from The Lost World and Jurassic World, it really looks like Biosyn has stepped up the genetics game when it comes to making more accurate looking animals. Now, I want to make it clear that so far, it hasn't been explicitly confirmed that Biosyn are the ones responsible for this dinosaur. But since Engine is out of commission, and Manticore doesn't seem to be in Jurassic World Dominion, I think Dodson's old company is the best guess when it comes to where these things are coming from. Speaking of which, the feathery Therizinosaurus and Pyroraptors are also going to be showing up in the new Jurassic Park movie, which is a little interesting because there's another creature that doesn't look like it's going to be accurate. The recent images that have been coming out for the Atrociraptors, which is an actual real life species of dinosaur by the way, showcases more raptors that don't have feathers. What they do have though is a selection of skin patterns that look like they're representing some of the Isla Sorna dinosaurs from the Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be some kind of Easter egg or if their DNA happens to be from a previously unknown recreation during the engine days, but it's safe to say that they are an interesting anomaly when it comes to the new species in the film. Even Lystrosaurus, a creature which isn't a dinosaur at all, happens to be looking super accurate in comparison to these new raptors. Still, there is the inclusion of Jurassic World Dominion's Giga, which is a far cry from what the real animal is believed to look like. I'm crossing my fingers for some sort of extended lore that reveals how exactly this thing came to North America or wherever it is in order to fight a T-Rex during the late Cretaceous, but I'm sure that's probably not going to be in the final film itself. Imagine if they told us later on that this was something of a previously unknown species of Giganotosaurus that mysteriously made its way into North Dakota or wherever that prologue takes place. That would make for some seriously interesting canon material that would also help make the continuity a bit more paleontologically accurate. Biosyn, however, is in the business of offering up more accurate dinosaurs in comparison to what John Hammond and Henry Wu were providing from InGen. Which means that Jurassic World Dominion is probably going to highlight these differences in a few interesting ways when it comes down to how they're represented against what we've seen before in this new film. Anyways guys, these are all just my own thoughts and opinions on the subject matter. Now, whatever yours happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it really means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.